Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13 developer beta 8 and public beta 7 have been out for about a week or so and have been using it primarily on my iPhone XS Max as well as my 12.9 inch iPad Pro that you see here. And so I wanted to give you my experience with it, talk about battery life, and then also talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll where over 10,000 or, or so of you voted, which I really appreciate, and there were hundreds of comments. So I went through all those comments, compiled the a couple major issues that people are having, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So the first thing is, overall, it's been very, very stable and good. I have had zero app crashes, and performance has been phenomenal. I've had no issues with scrolling, really. Occasionally, when I go into the, the music app, the first time it loads, it will hiccup a little bit, but for the most part, it's super fast as far as scrolling any of the page swipes, settings, everything seems to be super fast and fluid. And I find that to be true also on my iPad, whereas before I would have touch issues with this beta, I've had zero touch issues whatsoever. It seems to behave just fine and I've had no issues as far as that goes. However, there is one small area where I've had an issue and that's in mail. So mail does seem to occasionally not load properly. It's never crashed on me, but it actually isn't loading properly sometimes. So I'll open it, things won't be loaded, I'll have to refresh it or close out of the app, and then it will work. So for some reason, it's still not 100% there. Now, I'm still having a major issue with internet connectivity when leaving a Wi-Fi network. So if I'm at home or someplace I'm connected to Wi-Fi, and I leave that place and it jumps to cellular, it works for some apps, but most apps it does not. It will say I have no internet connection. That's including YouTube and many other apps. I'll just have no internet connection. So in order to get that to work, I have to turn on airplane mode, turn it back off, then turn off Wi-Fi, and then everything works okay. It's an incredibly annoying bug that I seem to have over and over. A reboot doesn't fix it. Everything else, though, seems to be pretty good. Now, there's a couple new tweaks and changes that I haven't seen elsewhere. They may have been in iOS 13, but they seem to be a few little tweaks that no one caught. So let's talk about them. The first one is in the health app. So if we're in health, let me go back here. You'll see there's little icons for each one of your activity summaries. So based on the specific activity, you may see a couple different icons here. So if I'm using my watch or tracking health using this phone, you'll see it catches my steps and things like that. So those little icons, sometimes they actually get a little bit bigger too when you go back into it. So you'll see that icon there. It may change based on the activity you have. So if we go into exercise or stand, those sorts of things may change. Now the other one I really like is in photos. If we go into photos and then we go to years, and we wait about five seconds or so, these should start to transition into a mini slideshow. So they'll start to switch. We'll wait here. It'll start to go here in just a moment. And you'll see, there we go. It's starting to transition to a mini slideshow through wallpapers and things like that. So it's a really nice little feature that's just in there that I haven't seen anyone else mention. We did have live video before in there, but not a little slideshow that I remember anyway. Now, as far as RAM management is concerned, RAM management is basically referred to as how long apps can stay in the background. So if you have a bunch of apps open here, how long they can stay in the background without reloading every time you go back into them. And for the most part, I'd say it's pretty good with the exception of a couple apps like Twitter or Gmail or YouTube, things like that. I've seen reload specifically Twitter more than anything else. Sometimes YouTube is reloaded. In fact, that reloaded a few times today. And that may just be because the app needs to be updated for iOS 13. We won't see a lot of those updates take place until iOS 13 is out because Apple doesn't allow it. So if someone has updated their app with tweaks for iOS 13, you probably won't see those fixes until mid-September when iOS 13 is released to the public. As far as banking apps, uh, if you have issues with banking apps, again, they'll need to update their app. Most likely Apple has fixed it on their side. So the app needs to now be updated. So expect those to work properly once iOS 13 launches to the public. Now, as far as battery life, if we go into settings here now, battery life shouldn't really be too much of a concern when you're on a beta because it will get better once the final is released. But battery health on this device is 100%. It could vary depending on the one you have. But as you can see here, 
This was today, three hours and 41 minutes of screen on time, 13 minutes of screen off time. If we go back to this day, we had six hours and 21 minutes of screen on time and 53 minutes of screen off time. So it varies heavily depending on the day. And most of that you'll see, I used it most of the day here as far as usage, almost hundred percent of the battery was used. And most of the time I'll have about 20% left. Usually I say about six and a half hours seems about right on iOS 13 so far with the betas. So overall, I would say it's pretty good. Hopefully it gets a little bit better when the finals released. Now, as far as the majority of what you had to say based off the YouTube community poll, there were two things I saw most of all. Many people said mail was giving them an issue as far as maybe even not loading, crashing or things like that. And also people were having issues in photos with it crashing. Thankfully, I've never had photos crash on me with this beta or any or the past couple of betas. It's not crashed at all. It's working fine, but many of you are having issues with photos and then also those banking apps like I mentioned before. Most people are saying that battery is good as well. Now, before we take a look at the YouTube community poll, I wanted to show you one thing that someone pointed, pointed out and said no one ever mentions, and that's probably because I don't really use it this way that much, but on the iPad, when you use split view, if you're familiar with that, you can open an app, so we'll open Safari, and with Safari open on my website, so if we go into Safari, and then we swipe up here, maybe we open a folder, and maybe we want to do split view with, we'll say B&H photo, we'll hold it. We can't do split view right now if you're pulling from a folder in the dock. So that's something I've never heard that mentioned before other than by this one person, but it doesn't seem to work. If you were to grab the app separate, it would work just fine. So there's a couple little small tweaks and bugs that are still there. Also, another issue they were saying they're having is moving an app from the home screen into a folder in the dock. So if I grab, say, numbers here, and want to move it into a folder, I have no issue as far as that goes, but other people are having an issue at times, it seems. So it looks like there's a couple little tweaks that they need to fix, but for the most part, it's working okay. But most people are, are saying that there's issues with the other things I mentioned already when it comes to mail or issues with photos. Now let's take a look at the YouTube community poll. Now the YouTube community poll had 10,000 votes, as you can see here, and 42% of you said it's great. Only 2% of you said it was terrible. 14% said, okay, but some bugs. 32% of you said I'm using iOS 12.4 or older, and 10% of you use Android. This is improved over the previous week, as you can see here in the upper left. So it looks like things are getting a little bit better. Now there's 274 comments Many of you had good things to say. I've read through every one of these. So let's go through about 10 of these and see what you had to say as well. It would take me all day to go through all of these and anyone can read through these if you'd like, but there are just so many comments. It'd be impossible to cover them all in this video without making it quite a very, or quite a long video, probably an hour long. So let's take a look iPhone 10R battery life on public beta seven isn't as good for me, but bug fixes are noticeable. And personally, it feels stable in every way on my device for how I use it. If I can get my battery life back in public beta eight, that'd be perfect. Oh, and I didn't talk about the release public beta eight. We're, we're on the weekly cycle. Now we could see that in a few days from now, maybe even a, a day or two. Using on iPhone 7 Plus, battery life has been affected, but overall, it's perfectly fine with some minor bugs. iPhone 10R, iOS 13, Beta 8, battery life has been improved. It's really stable. I still have, have problems connecting to my Sony camera, to my phone, using the remote camera app, but that's the developer fault, not iOS 13. That's true. The developers, developers need to update their app. The only problem is battery. It drains pretty fast on the first 10%, but everything else is good. Snapchat was doing better, so I think they're fixing it. iPhone XS Max. There's some kind of connection and refresh problems, but nothing too major. iPhone 10, 64 gigabyte. If I scroll too fast through my photos, the app crashes. Again, more people with photos issues, like I mentioned before. Amazing battery life, iPhone 10R using public beta seven on my iPhone 10 and iPad pro zero problems on my iPhone runs perfectly well. Battery life is more than okay on my iPad pro. There's some still some re springs here and there when setting a new wallpaper, for example, 
voice to text still doesn't work at all on both my devices using French, but other than that, it's perfectly usable as a daily driver for both. Voice to text works great on English. That's something that's been improved, although it still needs some work, but it has been a little bit better, but using another language, they still need to add some of that. Works great on both 6S and 8 Plus. 10S Max and iPad Pro 2018 still had a respring on the iPad, but otherwise it feels ready. LTE problems. I'm on iOS 13, public beta 7, and every time I leave my house, I have to turn on airplane mode so my LTE can get connected. And like I mentioned before, I have that same exact issue. It's incredibly annoying, so hopefully they fix it soon. On iPhone 7 Plus, the dy dynamic wallpapers remain blank, as in Beta 7 and 8. Actually, they fixed it in the previous one, so I haven't seen this in a couple betas, actually. My iPhone 10 is flawless. Using it on an iPhone SE, Photos app crashed twice when editing photos, but everything else seems great. So as you can see, on all of the different devices, including the SE, the 6S, the 7, the 8, the 10, it seems to be pretty good except for many people having those couple of bugs I mentioned and then battery life. Here's another one on an SE. No app crashes, reboots, or respring. Sometimes mail is not syncing properly using an exchange account, but most of the time it does. When it doesn't sync properly, I have to force close the app and reopen it. In the control center, the icon for screen mirroring is missing for me. Both of these are no big deal for me though. Otherwise, it it's working great, and this iPhone SE feels so much faster. Battery life is also pretty good, holds up a little more than two to three days with 80% battery health and peak performance capability. By the way, your videos are so well detailed. I love them most, most of the time. I keep rewatching those. Keep it up. You got yourself a new sub. Thanks very much. Still have lack of touch response on my 2018 iPad Pro 12.9. I'm not sure why that would be. Like I said, mine seems to be working fine, but it's still a beta, so hopefully we have a few more that fix that issue. iPhone 10 haven't experienced any bugs aside from third-party apps like YouTube and Instagram, but really smooth, and battery life has been better than public beta 6. Let's take a look at a couple more. iPhone 7, the beta is okay, but there's a very annoying bug that doesn't let you access to open Wi-Fi networks that need authentication because it's not possible to scroll on the page of login. They fixed the camera bug though, which is nice. The one where accessing the camera from the lock screen, if you then rotate a device, you just got half the screen. I actually didn't have that bug, but I had, did see a lot of people with that bug previously. Great on my iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 7 Plus, great update. I have my two-day battery phone back. So you'll see so many people have great battery life and then a lot don't. I don't know why. On my iPhone 7 Plus, it's been outstanding. I ran a Geekbench test and got the highest score I've seen on my device. The mail app improvements are definitely the highlight feature of this update too. I'm excited to see what Beta 9 brings. Using iPhone 10, it's smooth and really fast, but has some bugs and terrible battery life. Hope they change that really soon. I suspect there's a couple apps here and there that are causing this problem. There's got to be some commonality to the apps that are causing it. New beta release is great, but is still Still annoyed with the cut, copy, and paste new gesture. Already restored back to 12.4, and it feels a little bit different in terms of app speed launching. Found that iOS 13 really improves the app speed, but there are a lot of improvement that need to be done. Currently on the iPhone 7 Plus. Wi-Fi is not working properly. It often disconnects and very good on the iPhone 7 Plus. So that's it. And I really appreciate all your different comments and you voting on that. Hopefully we see beta nine within a few days here. I would expect it maybe as soon as Monday or Tuesday, but more likely a little bit later in the week. But it's hard to say. Apple has done two betas before in the same week. And with iOS 12, we actually had 12 betas and then the GM or Gold Master. So it's hard to say when we'll see what beta. But look for that this coming week. Let me know your thoughts again in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more of these videos as soon as they're released. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.